Hi, welcome to the second section. In this section, we will cover a few topics all around building a Java application. We will go together through the modeling stage, designing the class diagram. Then we will actually implement those classes in code and see how we can link them together by using one class's definition in another class. Finally, we will cover the topic of interfaces and abstract classes with code examples relevant to our application. Now let's start with the introductory video of this section, Modeling a Musing Streaming Service. In this video, we are going to take a look at building an application in Java and go step by step through the basic structure of the application's source code. That is, how is the code saved on disk? How do we group the source code in different folders under a project to make it easier to find and manage? Then we will do requirements gathering. That is understanding what does a user expect from the application and which questions is the application's data structure supposed to answer. Finally, we will go through the same requirements planning session, but from a developer's perspective, and we'll try to come up with a simple diagram that will represent our data structure, including all classes and relationship between them. First of all, let's briefly explain why are we building an app this early in the course and why this particular choice of an application. In order to understand the difference between learning by example and learning the theory first, you need to imagine how will this course look like if we first go through the entire theoretical part, explaining what each Java concept is, and then, much later in the course, showing these examples in code snippets. This will create silos in the course with two distinct parts, and will provide you with little context that will glue the two parts together. Also, the second part exposes the risk of you forgetting the theory, which will make it then harder requiring you to go back to the first section and watch the theory again to be able to understand the code examples. Learning by example is a more agile approach and dynamic, which allows us to review each theoretical concept with diagrams and bits of code, providing you with better explanation and helping you see each concept from different angles at the same time. As an example, from this course, we will explain how do you link two classes and how do you make them work together, and immediately show this with a diagram and with one or more code examples. The idea of a music streaming service or application is a very good example of a Java project, especially for the purpose of this course, because you have multiple entities such as songs and artists which are equally important as objects, as is the relationship between them. Another very good reason for choosing this application is the fact that it is very user-centric, meaning the data is usually inserted by a user, and the final beneficiary of the same data is the user trying to read and search for different items. In this case, you will be both the developer and the user. Also, it's good to think about an application from an extendability point of view and try to plan ahead on various functionality that you can later add to the initial code base. From a user's perspective, our application can contain way more than just songs, albums and artists and can actually store usage data about the listeners and provide analytics such as which songs are the most popular, or how many people have actually listened to a particular song. Finally, given how wide the technical scope of this application is, this example will provide you with many references that you can later reuse in other applications. We will talk about how to create your data structures, how to store your data in an efficient manner, and how to build a user interface to allow users to read and write data using the application.
Now we're starting the planning session and trying to work on the design of our application. Hopefully, by following these steps, by the end of the video, you will have a pretty clear image on what would the application look like from a developer's point of view. Since we have already spoken about having many object types, such as albums, artists and songs, you can probably imagine that we will have more than one Java class. Despite this, as you will be able to see in a later diagram, the structure of our application should be pretty simple and easy to understand. And with each object linking to each other, it will be easy to see how is this relevant in the grand scheme of things. While we will be able to extend this later quite easily, for now, we will run the application and interact with all objects from a single main method. This is how we will create objects and this is how we are going to read back the data. Also, for simplicity, the application we are going to write is a shell application, which means the user will interact with the application within the shell or command prompt. One of the first steps that any developer should do before starting to write an application is analyzing the requirements from a user's perspective. In many software development divisions or companies, you may even have dedicated people to this role, which are constantly using users' feedback to improve and enhance the application's features. Since you will be the application's main user, we can start defining some of the functionality we require. We will build an application with basic functionality that is able to link artists with their albums and those with the songs in them. And we'll be also able to link the songs to listener, storing when someone listened to a particular song. As we said in a previous slide, as the user interface will be limited for now, any interaction will happen through your IDE and console. What this means is that we will be able to write data into the application inside your IDE within the main method in Java, and any data you need back from the application will be printed to the console. In the next sections of this course, we will build on this functionality, and with simple additions, we will be able to let users add data such as new songs and artists from the command line. And using new links between our different classes, we will be able to answer more complex questions, such as searching the whole database for a certain song or showing the user how many times have they listened to a certain song. Also, a complex command line interface will not be covered in this section, but it will be later in the course, when we would know how to include external libraries in our Java application and make use of functionality that has been written by others to improve our application with only adding a few lines of code. You may already guess how the application will look like from a developer's point of view. However, we will summarize it on this slide for clarity. As we have mentioned on the previous slide, we will have four main objects represented in our Java application. Song, album, artist, and listener. Each one of these objects will be a different class, and each one of them will link to at least one other class. To describe that this simply, you have to think about your application as answering questions. We will cover these questions and diagrams in the next few slides, but this is where the user requirements gathering we've done on the previous slide is highly relevant. After the previous slide, you should already know the relationship between our Java classes. One artist has many albums, one album contains many songs, and one listener has listened to one or more songs. We can't emphasize enough, and this is why we chose to spend time in the current video. You should always remember that designing an application properly will make the development job and writing your code very easy and clear. Without a good design, what a developer will write is just guesswork, and the code is prone to many later changes. Also, without the planning stage, 
there is a risk of the application not fulfilling the user's requirements, therefore requiring much work later to make it useful. As we've mentioned, in order to properly do our planning job, we need to create a basic diagram showing the structure of our classes. We are not mentioning in the current diagram anything you don't already know, but just showing graphically how do classes link together in order to answer some basic queries from the user. As you will see later in a future video, linking classes together is not a complex task, and such a diagram only represents the fields that each Java class is supposed to have. If you remember from a previous section, we covered a basic example of the Java class with multiple fields, and that example will become relevant in building our current application. Just to bring a little bit of clarity into how that is relevant, imagine a class called Artist with a field called Album. This is all you need in order to link the two classes together. Later in the course, we will cover more, more complex data structures, allowing you to potentially link one artist to an unlimited number of albums they have released. At this stage in our planning effort, it is very important to remember the user's requirements and what questions does the application need to answer. If we build the application as per the current diagram, then it will be able to answer simple questions, such as which album has this artist released or which are the songs on this album. If the question changes or reverses, to let's say, which album does the song belong to, then the diagram changes as well, and will look like this. As you can see, a more complex diagram creates double links between certain classes. An application created following this version of the diagram will be able to answer the reverse of the initial questions, such as, which album does this song belong to, or which artist has released this album. We hope you got the idea around designing your application properly and building class diagrams, and that you understood how useful this can be in building applications. We will come back to this diagram later in the course once we add further functionality to our application and as our requirements change. On this slide, we're just summarizing what will be covered in the current section versus later in the course. In the current section, our application will be able to answer the following questions. Which albums has an artist released? Which songs belong to a certain album? And who listened to a given song? By extending our data structures later in the course, we will be able to add more functionality that allows further questions such as listing all the artists present in our database, providing some analytics such as how many people listened to a given song, or how many times has a certain song been listened to.